Okay, hello all. Um, today, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, Barry Harris's diminished theory, or what I like to call Barry's diminished genealogy, which is which chord beget which chord, which then beget which chord, which then beget all the chords that we use now. Um, I just think it's a very elegant and fresh way of looking at tonality, looking at how notes relate to each other. Um, and you kind of have to put aside everything that you learned in music school because it's, it's a brand new way of looking at things just from a logical perspective. And it gives you a little bit of insight also into maybe how he may have come up with the whole six diminished idea, um, the way he does it. So, so let's get right into it. I'll try to keep this as concise as possible. I just want to apologize in advance. This is going to be very pointy headed, wonky, theoretical. Um, but again, to describe it, it's a very theoretical idea, but if you understand the principle behind it, you can kind of see all the relationships in one holistic way, which makes it so much easier to improvise um, and to, to be able to have your ideas flow because you don't need to think anymore. You, you need to think to get to, to the point of understanding it, but once you get there, it's, it's, it's liberating. So let's get started. So in the beginning, there were 12, 12 tones of the chromatic scale. Well, that was the 13th is again, the repeat. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And that's to the 12 zodiac signs. That's the 12 disciples, whatever you want to call it. That's God, that's 12. And then God made man and woman, right? And uh, the man and woman is the two whole tone scales. You have one starting on a C, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, B flat. And one starting on a D flat, D flat, E flat, F, G, A, and B. And those are the two whole tone scales, which Barry calls man and woman, right? Um, so out of 12 came two, here to here, two, one, two. Man and woman get together, and what do they do? And then somebody in, says, somebody in class says, they argue. And then everybody goes, ha, ha, ha. And then Barry says, no, no, they get together, and they make babies. And they made three babies, OK? The three babies are the three diminished seventh chords. You have one beginning on a C, C, E flat, G flat, and A. You have one beginning on a C sharp, or a D flat, D flat, E, G, and B flat, and you have one beginning on a D. D, F, A flat, and B. And those are the three diminished seventh chords which come out of the two whole tones. And Barry likes to say, you know, I, it's, you can prove it because the DNA is perfect. If I take this C7, C, C whole tone scale, sorry, this C whole tone scale, and I change it to a C diminished, I got two notes from the C whole tone scale, and I got two notes from the C sharp whole tone scale. So there's a chromosome from one parent and a chromosome from the other parent. Here's the two parents. Here's the diminished. Here's the two tones from each parent. So it's logical. It makes sense that the two parents got together and had this child. But here's the thing. I can change into any any of the diminished from any of the whole tones. So here's a C whole tone, change it to a C diminished by moving a couple of notes. Change it to a C sharp diminished by moving just a couple of notes and change to a D diminished. Right? Let's try that on the C sharp whole tone or the D flat whole tone. Change it to a C diminished. Change it to a C sharp diminished. And change it to a D diminished. So you can see already now, it's starting to give you some sounds of like, oh wow, what if I went, what if I went? You can, you can start to create some movement into tonality that you might not have thought of. Just by looking at how a whole tone, or just this 
eph ephemeral idea of a whole tone, not related to any key, moving into a diminished, and then it gives you a doorway into a key. Really beautiful stuff. So we got the 12, the 12 became two, two whole tones. The two whole tones had three babies, the three diminished seven chords. Out of the three diminished chords, we can move chord tones around to get all the other chords that we use, or what Barry calls the diminished family, okay? Because the family is what comes out of, this is all one big family, obviously. So, so let's have a, a let's, let's look. Let's take this C-sharp diminished because it's a little easier to illustrate, okay? So here's that C-sharp diminished seventh chord. Now, and again, I talk about this briefly in other videos. I'll link to all of them, but let's get into it here. All the different possibilities that Barry discusses in class. By moving one chord tone down, you've created a dominant seventh chord. Okay, so a C-sharp diminished seventh. You move the C-sharp down a half step to a C, and you now have a C7. Okay, and I can do that with all of the chord tones. There is, I move the E to an E flat, and I have an E flat seven. I move the G to the G flat, and I have a G flat seven. I move the B flat to an A, and I have an A seven. This is very common, you see this all over the place, and, uh, um, um, and, and it's and, 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 and a lot of people know this and talk about this. But what I don't see people talking a lot about is, is he says, well, what if I move one chord tone up instead of down? So we have another chord now. We have D. I move that C sharp with C sharp E G B flat. I move the C sharp up to a D. I get D E G B flat. That makes that makes a G minor six chord in an inversion. So by moving one chord tone up from a diminished, I get a minor six chord, and I can get four minor six chords. Move one up. That's a B flat. D flat minor six. E minor six. So I got four. Dominant seventh chords, four minor six chords. Let's continue. What if I move two consecutive chord tones down? Okay, what do I have now? This C sharp diminished, C sharp E, G, B flat. I move the C sharp and the E down, and I end up with an E flat six. So I get a major six chord out of the diminished by moving two chord tones down. And what if I move those same two chord tones up? I get another major six chord. I get a B flat six. And in another video, we talked about connecting these two. You know, we, we did this, we went. And I can do that move four times. Here's a C sharp diminished to an E flat six, C sharp diminished to a B flat six. Move the middle, G flat, B, D flat. Move the top two, A, E. And move the outer ones, which are in, in fact consecutive, C, G. So we got four dominant seventh chords out of the diminished. We got four minor sixth chords out of the diminished by moving one chord tone up. We got two different sets of major six chords by moving two chord tones up or down. What else can we do? We can get two chord tones that are non-consecutive, non-consecutive ones. So here's that C sharp diminished again move two non-consecutive chord tones, the C-sharp and the G. I end up with a C dominant seven with a flat five. Okay, move them up. I end up with an 
E or B flat. Because as you, as you can see, a dominant seven with a flat five is the same a tritone away. Here's a C7 with a flat five. I move this C up here. It's a F sharp dominant seven flat five. So by moving two non-consecutive diminished chord tones down, I end up with C and F sharp dominant seven with flat five, two dominant seven flat five chords. And B flat and E dominant seven flat five. So what do we have? We, took, we had one diminished. We moved one chord tone down. Each chord tone, we end up with four dominant seventh chords. Two, uh, move one chord tone up, we end up with four minor six chords. Two chord tones down, four major six chords. Up, four other major six chords. Non-consecutive notes, down, you get four dominant seven flat five chords up for other dominant seven flat five chords those that's a big family but they're all related and and all the family they play well together because they're all related so you could mix and match all of those chords to create some beautiful harmony and I'll get deeper into it in some other videos because I don't want this to last too long but the last, the last point that I wanted to bring up now is how you get to a 6 diminished, 7 diminished, 7 flat 5 diminished, and minor 6 diminished, right? Well, we got to all of those chords by moving chord tones around on a diminished, right? Let's have a look at the 6. I moved two chord tones down, right? What do I have now? I actually have a chord that's made up of two diminished. So I have two notes from a C diminished and two notes from a C sharp diminished. Now, before we said there are three diminished. So where's the third diminished? The third diminished is a D diminished. Well, that's the one you move through. That's how the six diminished scale sort of came to be out of this genealogy. You have, you have a chord that's made up of two diminished. The third is the movement. Let's try with all the others. We have a dominant seventh chord. You have one note from C diminished. Two note, three notes rather, from C sharp diminished. Where's the D diminished? You move through. Uh, let's try the minor six. Here's my G minor six, right? It has one note from a D diminished and three notes from a D flat or C sharp diminished. Where's the C diminished? It's the one I move through. Dominant seventh with a flat five. Here's my C dominant seven flat five. I move two non-consecutive notes. I have two from C diminished. I have two from C sharp diminished. Where's my D diminished? It's the one I move through. So this is the most concise way that I could explain personally right now um, what I call Barry's diminished genealogy, where everything comes from. The 12 tones of the whole tone scale divided by two gave us the two whole tone scales, that's man and woman. They got together and had three babies, the three diminished seventh chords, which in turn, two of them gives us all the different chords by moving and then the third one comes in and gives us the six diminished scale. Super elegant, super simple. Um, I know that there's no, I didn't go into applications here because it would have taken too long, but I think that that's actually ripe subject matter for upcoming videos. So, so keep an eye out. We'll take a look at each of these levels and see what we can do with them. Um, but really, I encourage you to uh, to reflect on it, to contemplate it, and see what relationships you can come up with of your own. 
and please do share them. I love to hear your comments. Um, it helps me. I like it gives me great ideas for for videos and th and stuff. And uh, yeah, so like and subscribe if this was useful. Share it to all your friends. Hit that notification bell if you wanna uh, if you wanna be notified next time I put a video out. And uh, you know, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.